consultant uh, for agile coaching in Russia, Moscow, Russia. Uh, originally from Siberia <laughs> and uh, from Novosibirsk, from a um, uh, small uh, part of Novosibirsk that is called uh, Akadem Garadok. It's a scientist place uh, where almost uh, everyone is scientist and uh, at least uh, half of uh, population had PhD uh, in Soviet Union. And uh, we was um, learning the computer science and we was working a lot with uh, IT. Uh, as uh, originally a team, but uh, now I'm working more with uh, marketing uh, to make uh, companies uh, really uh, agile on the business level, not only on IT. <laughs> uh, about IT in Russia, maybe uh, it sounds strange, but uh, I've worked mostly in um, American uh, companies or outsourcing that works with uh, America, uh, with USA because uh, my first uh, working place was in Siberia and uh, almost all Russian companies are situated mostly in Moscow and so on. They have a head office in Moscow and we have uh, had uh, 3,000 kilometers between these places and um, people from Moscow usually have uh, some problems contacting with uh, Siberia, but US not. So most of my experience is uh, related to U.S. companies. Uh, some time I worked with uh, French companies. Uh, I worked with um, in inside of um, venture capital uh, company in Russian uh, French capital, uh, Novix Capital, and uh, I had worked with a lot of these French uh, startup uh, companies that uh, got invested and had to develop something. Uh, like it. Uh, and uh, two big companies that I will talk about, it will be Russian biggest internet company, Yandex. Uh, it's the fourth biggest search engine in the world, but almost nobody knows about it because it's uh, mostly ex-Soviet uh, countries territory. It has more than 60% share uh, of search in uh, Russia, still. Uh, it beat on Google uh, for a lot of years and still beats it. Uh, and uh, I worked in MTS, uh, it's a mobile uh, telecom provider that's also is the biggest in Russia. I like uh, companies that uh, are first place. Uh, and I work as an agile coach inside in both of these companies. And what I will talk uh, about will be like three years in Yandex and two years, almost two in MTS. This, uh, this thing is first that I learned from uh, my start uh, of um, Scrum Master uh, slash Agile coach career in uh, early um, 2011. If you are inside uh, of the company, not consulting agency, um, you can call yourself coach, but uh, almost everyone else inside will think that you are a change manager. Uh, I don't think uh, that it's uh, only uh, Russian specific, but we in ex-Soviet Union have uh, really big problems with uh, directive management. A lot of people, uh, a lot of managers think that, uh, okay, this is another manager that will make uh, our programmers more productive. Uh, and I wanted to ask you uh, if you have such uh, questions, problems uh, in, in your area, that's why I wanted to, um, share this experience about change management <laughs> guys in the talk has somebody an idea do you uh, can you say yes or not to this uh, i have never okay. this kind of issues in none of my customers they're all very democratic lovely and embracing the change and very exciting on our job <laughs> it's a nightmare <laughs> it's mostly change indeed from my position what are you thinking you guys if you have, have a topic and you want to change something there's always people who are already long in the company since 10 years more than 10 years and it's really hard to get something really change in the long run Mm -hmm. Because when some, somebody comes in, like a consult or something, they're discussing something, 
Okay. And Virginia, what do you think? Um, I, I agree. I, I worked in uh, American banks and um, like from 2000 to 2014, I also worked in the 1990s, but I found that um, you didn't have change managers, you didn't have the terminology agile coach, but the change is really happening in training and development, okay. especially in the American companies. And um, that's where we looked at, at developing people, bringing solutions to the business, and uh, sharing and, and creating a, a flexible organization. Okay. So actually, uh, maybe someone also else yeah, wants. Uh, uh, my previous employer, uh, the managers and uh, all the senior dev, they still say that uh, we used to do this for every for every modifications or a new feature or a new requirement. So uh, they're gonna tell you that we used to do the uh, this in that way. So uh, no changes uh, will be done sooner. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Ulysses, what is the point in Mexico? He's hiding. Sorry, <laughs> sorry here. Uh, uh, about the questions, about Marina questions, about if you're an agile coach inside, you become a change manager. Do you agree, do you disagree? What is your opinion about it? Oh, uh, well, I, I think it should not be matter, in my opinion. But it's difficult because sometimes you need to obey to some authority. So the point is, what, you, what is your authority and what are your constraints about that? So if uh, uh, the, the idea here, from, in my perspective, is that uh, most of the companies uh, are selling consultant, but are hiding behind agile coaching. So the, the, the main idea is starting uh, a project independently, if it's uh, internal or external, it's to say uh, what things uh, will we change and, and, and create a, a kind of uh, understanding of the old system and what things will we change independently if you are internal or external. The problem here is that uh, some companies deal with agile coaches, internal agile coaches to say, oh, we are changing. but in real, they are not changing. They are saying, oh, they, we, we say we are changing, but in the real leadership is still the same. Uh, people are behaving the same. Company is not changing. It's just a requisite because it's fashion. So that's the main problem in my opinion. Thank okay. you. That's uh, what I was fighting for. <laughs> yeah, Andreas here. And it's even worse. If you're an internal coach, they even kind of don't trust you. They may want to have even external ones while the internal one might be even better, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, jump on your idea, Andreas, because I discovered what happens here in Baden-Württemberg. We are in the same region, but not the same. Uh, and there's a very cultural issue is, uh, sometimes when you're an external, you, have, you are more powerful than an internal, because usually you don't care about uh, if it's your boss or not your boss. And yeah, when, yeah. Yeah. You, when one of the sponsors is your boss, when your boss is say, don't do it, you can't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm anyway an alien in my own company, according to mindset and way of working. So that's fine. So that's why usually I work outside my company. But that's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Dirk, any idea? Sorry, do you hear me? I've got some technical issues at the beginning. Yeah, sounds good. Ah, okay, great. I fixed it. Um, Yes, I'm saying, uh, I would agree um, to Marina that if you're an agile coach inside, um, well, you become or you need to be a change manager. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So let's go from this topic. Um, if you don't want, uh, nobody cares actually. Uh, you don't select uh, the position when you come inside of company, especially if uh, some big boss decides to make uh, an agile coaches functional department. It's uh, a really big problem. That's uh, what uh, sometimes we have at this beginning. 
but uh, it's um, not a problem if you use change uh, some change models. Actually, I have reinvented myself uh, a quarter model, so that's why I wanted to share with you this experience. Uh, first of my examples will be uh, real experience in um, Yandex. Actually, first of all, it's search engine, and it appeared in 1997. Uh, so it was even earlier than Google. Uh, and the beginning of the company is uh, as early as 89. Its uh, company is uh, almost like me in age. And when I came, uh, this was a company that uh, knew everything about how to create websites. But uh, in one department, one very, very interested uh, programmer decided to go deeper and to make uh, changes in Chromium. And that's how appeared a Yandex browser. And uh, when I came, uh, I was firstly a QA uh, manager of all desktop applications. It's like uh, my client, uh, anything, anything desktop that companies make uh, like addition to a website. Um, and uh, when I came, there was like 20 programmers and like three or five uh, QA engineers, no auto test, no nothing. Just uh, some patch uh, to Chromium. And uh, we was a faster growing uh, company, uh, company's department uh, in all the history. Uh, after three years, we was more than 300 people, more than 100 devs uh, only in desktop. Uh, we had uh, eight DevOps engineers, only uh, DevOps eight engineers, uh, more than 40 systems uh, to support uh, work of the browser. Uh, we, of course, made something like Google made, but uh, not everything was uh, copied. Some uh, backend was still uh, on Google. And uh, our boss said that we need 48 hours for a sub patches. And this is what challenge uh, have become. Uh, at that time, uh, Yandex has uh, hired uh, Opera Software Company uh, that made browser. Maybe you remember this browser, maybe not. It was mostly popular in Russia, even though it's made in Norway. Uh, and this uh, browser team was like outsourcing for us. And uh, I was... Uh, in Oslo, I made uh, a lot of conversations how they make browser, and uh, I, we had only one uh, goal: it's uh, to create uh, 48 hours builds. It's like when you need to patch something, you have like critical change. Uh, you have 300 programmers, so you have several several hundred uh, branches in uh, an repository. You don't know what the hell has happened, but uh, happening. Uh, and uh, your QA checklist uh, takes at least 24 hours. Uh, your browser build is like three hours. And you don't have at least more than two times. Uh, you should build it actually from the second time. And uh, they decided uh, that um, I, as Q me as QA manager was, um, talking too loudly about Agile. <laughs> I had a previous experience in uh, companies, uh, in American startups and so on. And in um, 2012, uh, I become, became a project manager slash Agile coach, slash Scrum master, slash release manager, uh, and anything else that will help us uh, lead to this goal, uh, 48 hours build. Marina. Hey. Hi, uh, I, I have one, one observation because mo most of the time we, we say we are changing the system, but in real we are changing the process. Uh, and, and you talk about all your experiences, about all these engineers. You, you change the process, but actually you change something else to, 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 to do this shift uh, about uh, uh, this transformation, as we're saying, one way. Because most of the time we say, oh, uh, Scrum is a framework and we will do iteratively and we will create these new processes. But, but what else did, did you experience uh, doing uh, that in, in, your, in your projects? I was inside 
I was like a uh, responsible for all this product. And then I managed uh, to move to manager's team. Yes, I was change manager. And I didn't work with release branches and so on. I just uh, understood that I need to grant the process that allows to make it. Of course, I worked with development teams, first of all. Uh, the, in the bottom of uh, this slide, you can see uh, notification. <laughs> I don't know how to say. Uh, development teams we had in four time zones, uh, in four countries and five time zones, from Turkey to Siberia. Yeah, uh, some of them didn't speak Russian, of course. Uh, of uh, programmers was in Moscow campus. It's usual, of course. Uh, but uh, in Moscow, they had uh, less problems. But uh, I was working in St. Petersburg. I was uh, the only manager in St. Petersburg uh, because uh, St. Petersburg development team grew up to almost 50 engineers, and they say that they need one manager to help them. And them in Moscow to have a lot of uh, business trips and so on. And they pushed uh, management to have such position. That's why I was moving from QA to project manager's position. Actually, uh, this uh, request from my big boss to change the process at all, not to help uh, St. Petersburg team to represent their, their questions, but uh, to make these questions disappear, to have the single process. So, and uh, we had office in Yekaterinburg, it's Ural Mountains, it's between Europe and Asia. Uh, we had team in Novosibirsk, uh, it was like plus three time zones from Moscow. We had Turkey, mi minus two time zones from Moscow. And uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, helping guys, like we used uh, U-Test, uh, it's now called Upload, as I remember, uh, from Israel uh, and USA and so on. And uh, we started to make uh, a single scrum. When I tried to uh, have consultant help, uh, my boss said, we don't have consultant budget. Journey became from no budget, uh, no uh, external consultants. Yandex uh, only this year, maybe the last year, started uh, asking external consulting. It's a self-made company, actually. Uh, and so uh, nobody likes, uh, nobody uh, wants someone from outside to participate in this. Uh, I was uh, very, very interested. How can we change something when we have more than 300 people? And I had three teams to have experiments. Uh, and I reinvented uh, quarter model myself. Almost the same. I had only one mistake with... Uh, two uh, points. And uh, actually when I learned the Kotel model uh, later, it helped me uh, fixing this only one mistake. And uh, actually uh, it made me uh, to make more a fast change. With the first three experimental teams, we spent more than eight months just uh, to uh, have sprints uh, not uh, stand-ups, not retrospectives, not anything, just uh, sprint planning. It was very difficult because uh, Yandex hates Agile. We, don't, we shouldn't have uh, called this Agile. Uh, we shouldn't have uh, called this any other thing uh, except it's regular planning. Uh, it's almost uh, like everyone do and so on. Actually, uh, we started from this model. Uh, and it really worked. Uh, you can see on this picture two different uh, types of uh, definition. Uh, one is from one uh, article, another from picture I found in Google. But uh, this is the same model. Everyone uh, see it with uh, different words. So I decided to put both of these interpretations on the screen. Uh, in Russia, we have uh, also several translations for this. Thing. I never read any book of uh, Professor John Cotter. Never. His model, only these points of description, is really perfect enough to uh, understand and to implement and to fix some mistakes. The, the question 
of these eight steps. If you mix the steps, if you make like five before three, it doesn't work. If you make two after three, it also doesn't work. Uh, if you want to make some really good changes, you need not only one change team. Actually, in big company, you need as much uh, change teams, as much changes you want. And uh, better process is when you are like um, in um, royal families games, like uh, these friends, these uh, communications, uh, everyone speaks in some... Uh, private conversations and so on, uh, I think I bet uh, a lot of uh, contractions even, uh, only just speaking peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, uh, traveling a lot of uh, between offices, uh, between people, between management, and uh, helping people uh, encourage others to change. So I don't think that uh, any of these changes that made uh, in these two companies uh, was made because I worked some, made some papers or something like that. I never wrote any, um, some like orders, you should do this, this, and this. Uh, I never made official letters, uh, no, nothing. Just conversations. In smoking place, in uh, parties, in uh, any, uh, this is what we did. Uh, I had really, uh, in Yandex, we had like five change teams in 300 people. Uh, in uh, MTS, uh, it's uh, company-wide transformation. I, in Yandex, it was like 300 uh, people in my uh, area and several other teams that uh, was uh, encouraged by me and made it themselves, including uh, the core teams in Search Engine. And they still have illegal agile. <laughs> <laughs> so they make uh, anything they want, but it's not from the top, it's from the bottom. And they want, uh, it's like um, previously Yandex was called like 1000 startups. Every team uh, can select their own process. So that's why agile works there in some parts of company, but not officially, of course. Officially, they hate it. <laughs> okay, this is so. Uh, I had actually support. Uh, I had support from uh, not non-executive level, from middle management. Okay. Uh, and uh, the goal, like, uh, make build in 48 hours, not make agile. Yeah. So make everything as a release manager so this build can be done. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, do you find that Agile is... You're losing you, Virginia. Yeah, maybe you should uh, use a text message. Uh, we can read it and answer. Agile concept or tool that frees the person's work more flexibility. Question, I work with uh, introducing people the planning poker technique. So I, I guess <coughs> we translate the question of uh, does Agile give more freedom uh, for people uh, in their working model? I think actually we have some uh, like a life hack for this. I usually uh, ask manager to set up the goals for the team, not from the process uh, part, but from the business goal. It's like uh, take, take the market share, take the uh, big revenue or something like that. Or like monthly active users uh, audience, like eight million users monthly. And, er it, and to do anything to get this uh, goal. So in my first example, uh, everything, every big change that made uh, more than one and a half year was because of this uh, 48 hours build. Mm -hmm. Not because of flexibility, not because of uh, anything. Uh, we had a big goal, like 10% market share of browsers in Russia. 
mm -hmm. uh, to have this 10 percent uh, we had to make anything fast actually okay. and that's why uh, we focused on business goal and the second transformational goal it's like a faster uh, technical process because we wanted uh, to make technological transformations but because uh, we made everything in technology and still didn't have uh, possibility to reach this goal so we had to change the people the way they think uh, processes and so on okay great could you describe the single steps in your change process um, this means uh, what was your vision to whom did you communicate it what were the quick wins and finally how did you deal with top level yeah okay uh, look this is a very big company and uh, when i worked there it was like 10 uh, 6 thousand employers i never dealt with seo for example uh, about agile i never dealt with any top level uh, only middle management uh, i was a project manager i like uh, I, I was like five steps down from the CEO. It's uh, like uh, if CEO is on eight position, uh, I will be in four. <laughs> so uh, I didn't ask anyone. I just had a, a communication from boss of my boss uh, to make anything possible to make this build, build faster. Nothing else. <laughs> and uh, according to have a big freedom, uh, we had uh, cooperated with another Saji guy from mobile browser mm -hmm. and he already had some sprints, stand-ups, something like that from mobile department that was a bit uh, faster uh, and some uh, practices before joining the Yandex and uh, they just shared with us some experience and I uh, communicated with him. Uh, I changed uh, some uh, model uh, of uh, our ideal brand book. We had uh, like some browser gel uh, and uh, they had something like do a gel, some rituals. So they didn't think something big about it. They just had teams and sprints, stand-ups and retrospectives. Uh, they even have 25 per persons team. Uh, they didn't want to split. That's cozy. <laughs> yeah, and they made 15 minutes stand up in 25 people team. <clears throat> okay. And they was fine with it. Uh, so it was not my uh, part, so I didn't uh, make anything. I had three teams in St. Petersburg. Uh, and one actually was mostly remote team. Actually, I didn't tell you about the extremely remote team. One guy was uh, in Australia. One guy was in Chile. Uh, he was in Startup Chile, actually, but still continued working with Yandex. And uh, two guys was in St. Petersburg. Uh, and we had uh, these three difficult, uh, different teams that had uh, not good uh, performance review uh, about their performance. So I could do anything with these guys, of course, uh, including uh, only elements. I was, uh, they had uh, tech leads. Uh, leading development engineers in each team uh, that uh, became, in my opinion, like Scrum Masters. Anybody thought that I am Scrum Master, <laughs> but I didn't. I was mo mostly acting like Agile coach and change manager. Uh, and these guys, they uh, was interested by my uh, helpers, mobile team, uh, to become uh, working uh, with sprints, stand-ups, retrospectives, and so on. And uh, I had three teams. So I had uh, my first experiment. It actually failed. Uh, one uh, team, we wanted to make the team Kanban. Mm -hmm. uh, second level of uh, Kanban uh, model, like uh, just team Kanban. Just like Scrum, but Kanban. Uh, and uh, it was not so good because they... Uh, so, uh, the blocker tickets in Jira uh, terminology are the most uh, important tickets and reacted to these blocker tickets fast because they have fast lane. But all other five, six hundred tickets that was in these six people was uh, unspecified. I started to make some other experiment. Uh, 
three teams. One team I suggested to make sprints planning without stand-ups and retrospectives. One team I suggested retrospectives without anything. And one team uh, planning poker without anything. Uh, and plan poker without sprint planning, just plan poker, even uh, on Gmail mode, because they were the most remotely team. And uh, when they saw this, uh, they started, uh, they saw this on the mobile team, once they was uh, guests on uh, stand-up meeting, for example, 10 people guests in someone's stand-up meeting in the meeting room. And they was encouraged to make this and made this. Stand-ups without sprints, without anything. And then, two weeks later, I expected this question. The team lead uh, catched me in the, uh, okay, we have stand-ups, but I understood it will, will work very well when we will have sprint planning. Mm -hmm. uh, because stand-up without sprint planning is not so effective. And this was uh, what I expected. I tried to provocate them. Mm -hmm. They tried the three different techniques. They see different positions. They're all in the two rooms uh, lo located in one place. Two big rooms, like open spaces, but not. And of, ca of course, they see how they interact each other. And uh, this was uh, how we created uh, requests to have the complete Scrum process. And in more, not more than six weeks after this experiment started, uh, decided to have the complete Scrum process. So you, you, you create the demand, the, the, the desire to go in the, in the Scrum on Agile approach. Yeah. I, uh, I built a request from mm -hmm. them. I suggested them only one technique for single for each team. And then they cross uh, showed themselves uh, that it's an interesting techniques and asked me the whole process. Cool. Uh, this was uh, like a game, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. Engineers in Yandex uh, is the most paid uh, people uh, and project managers is like, ah, bring me coffee, guy. <laughs> 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 so nobody can push them. Developers cost like uh, Ferrari, I think. Uh, so if you lose a developer and he goes to another company, mostly he will go to Google or Facebook. And uh, he will never come back, actually. So, and he will never come back to Russia, maybe. And uh, that's why we had to care about them, mostly, more than in any other company in Russia. And nobody could push them, nobody could say them anything. So I should, uh, I had this uh, proposition, not to lose anyone when making change from 50 engineers. Nobody should be on the push, of course. And uh, these uh, guys they showed results actually. So first seven year, seven months, I've lost on the Kanban experiment. Actually, later I learned how to make good <laughs> ideas with Kanban also. But there, in uh, certain year, I uh, lost a lot of time uh, trying to think that people are self-organizer from the beginning. They need to learn the more straight process, how to self-organize. Then they can move to more and more free frameworks or something. And uh, they learned the Scrum process. Uh, we had almost, uh, from my opinion, it was almost good uh, like Scrum guide of the time uh, process. We had planning poker, we had uh, sprint planning, uh, we had uh, this idea that I, engineers add 10% for technical issues, 30% uh, for bug fixing, something like that. Uh, and uh, they have showed the good uh, percent of prediction. So if they say they made 88 story points, actually they will add 95 maybe, or 79. So plus minus 10%. And uh, without any pushing. And uh, when I was uh, starting uh, this uh, description, we uh, had experimented with the three teams and made a working process for these three teams. But it doesn't mean that uh, it worked outside of this St. Petersburg office. And we had another, 
idea that uh, it's fine that they work with this process, but it's only three teams uh, from 12 teams. Okay. So only one product, 12 teams should make one single build of exact file. <laughs> and when someone use Scrum, someone doesn't, uh, it's really big problem. Uh, and uh, we started to create some vision, creating some vision uh, with Moscow team, with uh, other cities. Uh, I had traveled to uh, Minsk, Belarus capital, uh, also a Soviet country. And uh, in Minsk, um, guys told me something very brilliant. I use it from that time, a lot of years. Uh, if you want to encourage uh, programmers to start uh, work with sprints and with planning poker uh, and to make... Uh, the good prediction about sprints, you say them that if they uh, finish all the points on the sprint, they can catch any task from the backlog. It's like if you eat everything, you can eat an ice cream. <laughs> this life hack helped me more than five years in any programmer's team. Of course, not in marketing, not in uh, other time types, that, uh, yes, but uh, in programming, yes. So uh, this helps people, uh, but then we reinvented another life hack for the self-organization uh, because if you finish everything from, from your side, it doesn't mean that you've, your team finished any task in the sprint. And uh, no ice cream be before uh, all the tasks in the sprint of all the team is done. So they become stealing tickets from others. I have a stupid question. Does ice cream work as a motivation when you're living in Siberia? Yes. Okay. In Siberia, we eat ice cream in minus 35 on the street. <laughs> <laughs> it says that minus plus minus gives plus. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in Siberia, it's very hot in summer. Plus 40, plus 50 Celsius. So, yes. <laughs> Very good. Guys in the audience, any questions? Alex, any questions? No, I, no I, I think what you see for me rings a bell, what I, ex I experienced not in Russia, but usually everywhere in Western Europe. We have a lot of similarities. <laughs> Oh, oh, it sounds also very familiar with what happens in Lebanon. Uh, maybe the guys in Lebanon can agree or not. Yeah, uh, here what I'm facing, uh, I have a team in Pakistan. So, uh, and I work uh, as, uh, in a company that uh, implements the daily stand-up, just the daily stand-up on my previous company. So it's like uh, it ends up uh, as a status meeting, and uh, with the, after uh, two three months, we stop the, the stand up meeting. So it's like uh, as we were saying, uh, uh, we used to do that, so they stop the changes for uh, for that part. Mm -hmm. Okay, Virginia has written, "Like in Minnesota, we eat ice cream in the winter." <laughs> And Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota is like uh, Siberia, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yes. Yeah, actually, we eat ice cream here, <laughs> but it's not called as Russia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is uh, was about three teams on the beginning, and we collected some life cards, like uh, how to simulate programmers move to Scrum process. And then they became stealing tasks from each other. Because if someone didn't put task uh, in progress, it means it's not uh, in progress. It improved uh, the pushing of button of in progress in Jira in very, very 1,000%, I think. Before it was like, oh, it's new, 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 and then released. Uh, and uh, we collected some life hacks on internal wiki page and started encouraging other teams with these developers uh, to move to this Scrum process. Actually, uh, without any pushing, we moved 10 from 12 teams. 
uh, and this ice cream method worked very fine. So they uh, made uh, prediction how many story points they can make. Uh, they made all these story points uh, without uh, pushing from managers, any managers, not no managers on the meeting. Uh, and uh, this uh, task was uh, organized from top to bottom by priority. So they just took uh, first, second, and so on until the line and in sprint. And uh, after the all tickets in sprint are finished, uh, you can, uh, they could take any ticket. And uh, it made uh, a lot of uh, bonuses, like uh, they made some technological issues uh, and so on. And uh, a lot of fun product scenes that uh, never had priority also uh, got changed to be made, chance. And uh, only last two teams was uh, not so good with this uh, idea. They asked their very senior programmer uh, and he allowed them not to move to Scrum. When you have 12 teams, 10 of them are using Scrum and two not, it's uh, even big uh, possibility to push actually, because it's like last mile, it's like 5%. And I did this push actually. Uh, it was very softly. Uh, I communicated to boss of my boss and said uh, like, uh, Kirill, uh, these last two teams don't want. Their uh, leading uh, programmer said they, they, that they cannot move. Uh, he, uh, our leading programmer hated me actually, I think, uh, because I changed the process in, in his teams. He thought it's his teams. Uh, but it became agile teams. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he lost some, of course, uh, power during these changes. Uh, and I said, okay, uh, the chief uh, project manager uh, will come to you and you will want it. In two hours later, they uh, scheduled a video call and said, he came and we want. So this was the only one pushed during one and a half year. That's good. Uh, and uh, after that, I was uh, in the conference uh, and I talked about how to move step by step and actually it was quarter moves. And uh, two years later, I have learned, not, not two years, maybe one year later, I had an invitation uh, in uh, online university in Russia uh, to tell a uh, lecture about Kotter, Kotter model. Why? Because the uh, person who reviewed my uh, presentation on this conference thought that I used Kotter model, that I know it. So I reinvented Kotter model. Uh, he understands that this is Kotter model and he asked me to make lecture about Kotter model. I never heard about. That's good. So uh, actually it was only two steps I missed. Uh, it's like two and three. Yeah, I, I made a vision before making team. It was difficult. It took uh, eight months. This uh, mistake took eight months. But be after that, uh, we had to make change team before uh, change vision. <laughs> and it started working fine. Uh, this was uh, about um, first big companies. 6,000 uh, employers before uh, the department, 300 people. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and I never uh, be afraid uh, of uh, learned helpness from that time, actually. We could find life hack, we could find any ice cream, but people are willing to change actually. And this is my favorite. Uh, trick about cats. Do you know this? No. Who knows it? The three guys here doesn't know it. Somebody... Uh... Yeah, Russia is very, very cat's country. Uh, if you put this uh, red cross or not, 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 it's not important if actually if it's red or not. Uh, cat will be thinking that it's sketched inside. Mm -hmm. 
and will never move around before you save it. Like a robot vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have here a question from Virginia. So I apologize, she has a very bad audio and she's typing poorly. That's wrong. She just late. <laughs> My question, you say the company doesn't like Agile, but you use the concept behind Agile, but call it change management. So do you think the concepts behind Agile have freed the mindset of the people and begin to work faster and more flexibly? Uh, no, uh, in the company level, in official politics, they don't like Agile. But inside, if team wants, it can use anything. Agile or not Agile. So we used Agile, we called it Agile. We called it Scrum on the team level, on the product level, not officially. Yeah, okay, you call it change at the other level. Yeah. Okay, good, good trick. It's a good trick. It's like release management was. <laughs> uh, every of these changes was uh, proposed like release management issues. Oh, lovely. That's a good goal. <laughs> That's your level one, I guess. Your point yeah. one of the cutter model. Yeah, the, this uh, one will be faster, even though it's all the company, not uh, one department. Uh, this uh, sign uh, is an off-road uh, trick. Uh, of Russia. Everyone go with me, I know the shortest way. Uh, and it's what I've done when I came to MTS, uh, oh. Mobile Telesystems. Uh, and I have a question, sorry. Mm -hmm. Question from Marcus. Why do you think top level don't like Agile? Just terminology or something deeper? Uh, they don't like anything new actually. They are proposed to manage stability of the company. Anything that makes change, uh, it doesn't matter if it's agile or it's beyond budget, you know, anything. They firstly don't like changes. They like uh, growing uh, actions and so on. So money, money, money. Any change, it's a possibility to lose money. Okay. Agile, agile is also a possibility to lose money, actually. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Virginia asks also, is this cultural? In Russia, yes. In, in Belarus, uh, ex-Soviet also country, it's even more because we have not changed in presidents for a lot of time. <laughs> I see this uh, is really a cultural problem. If you have a president that was not changing for 20 years, uh, you, you like... Um, Stability. I don't like stability actually, but uh, I travel a lot. <laughs> okay. uh, but people who never leave the country, uh, here is a joke in Russia that uh, there are people who was born when uh, Putin became president and they are already 18 years old. Mm -hmm. They never knew as a president. So uh, now we have a private <laughs> joke here is uh, the only country who really understands Agile is Belgium because they have no government since years. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's like this. Uh, I see, I work with uh, several countries and I see the parallel uh, between the change of uh, parties, change of presidents and freedom of mind. Mm -hmm. Conservative, uh, even changes uh, like in USA, like two, two times uh, eight years, eight years of different presidents. It's much better than uh, nothing changed for 20 years. In Belarus, uh, this president is from 19, 1991, after the Soviet Union failed. Oh. <laughs> so it's even worse, actually. Uh, and their people are really very straight. They don't like change. Yeah, Marcus is, has written, interesting, because a lot of German traditional companies like BMW, Siemens, etc., start to impose agile from top down without knowing much about it, creating <laughs> problems. <laughs> I can't uh, just, hear SAP. <laughs> maybe it's not a, okay. It's not scientific research. It's only my opinion. <laughs> no, it's not about a scientific. Just, just you know, uh, in the board of directors, uh, everybody is asked to be agile now because these, <laughs> uh, like companies like gardeners or foresters, they they provide great visions of the future of companies of a management level. 
And they say, if you're not agile, your company is dead in the five years. So they have to implement agile without have any clue about it. Uh, you know, we had such a problem, actually, such mindset. Three years ago, it became mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the Russian biggest bank uh, president, uh, Sberbank, it's uh, from 19th century bank in Russia, was the only one. <laughs> and uh, it has three, 300,000 employers. It's 10 times more than mobile telesystems where I worked. And he was on a business trip in uh, California. And after that, he started uh, pushing uh, publicly that agile or die. <laughs> yeah. Three years ago it became. But uh, what I made in Yandex, it was more than the time. It just uh, like last three years, we have uh, very big salaries for an agile coaches, like C-level uh, persons. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's uh, really more than... Uh, a representative in uh, parliament salary so uh, it's like hype i don't know how fast it will come out but i think more, maybe one or more year or one more uh, can you tell uh, in, in western europe and in america it's very hype still yeah it's it's the the new trend <laughs> the new trend <laughs> 20 years new trend <laughs> okay so another example is what? I can tell about another example. Go ahead. <laughs> stage. Uh, the two products I use to provocate uh, the virus uh, agile change in company. I tell I because uh, I was the first one agile coach uh, in the agile coach department. Uh, there was a, my boss, a project manager in agile coaching, who created this uh, financial investment program that's like I will hire five agile coaches and I will make changes who prepared everything for me to appear there and then first three months I was a single agile coach in company like 70,000 employees uh, and second was appearing after the this I think like trial period and uh, we took, uh, I found the ways to communicate with marketing management in uh, mobile telesystems, uh, the main office. Where I, I moved to Moscow to work with this uh, company. Uh, like, um, uh, I, not, I wasn't inside. I was uh, like a contractor, but full-time contractor. Mm. So uh, I found uh, IT project manager there was, uh, who had problems with marketing product manager. Uh, and I asked him to introduce me to this uh, marketing manager. It's like uh, director great, but not director. Uh, it was, um, okay, there is a president, vice presidents, then directors, and then uh, this guy in company of 70,000 employees. And this guy uh, listened to me and uh, allowed me to make some uh, interviews of this team, of the self-service hub, because they had a big problem, uh, uh, time to market. It was uh, more than a year from uh, idea to implementation in each ticket, almost each ticket. You, you have to do something small, you have to wait one year and two months. Mm -hmm. And uh, several weeks ago, they came to my friend. I already don't work so much with this company. I still work for them, but not so much. Uh, and they said, your changes didn't work. We still have time to market two months. <laughs> One and a half years later. Okay, my changes didn't work. I, I, I was laughing a lot. So uh, this uh, product was very nice because uh, it was on control of board of directors. Mm. Because they had uh, a lot of problems, uh, they should implement anything that uh, marketing, uh, new traffic uh, ideas, new uh, options uh, on the plans, uh, and so on. And they, they have to make it fast. Because if marketing invented something, they have like three months to make this. It's a th top number one telecom company in Russia. Telecom, mobile telecom. Mm. They have uh, another top uh, in local networks, but uh, in, in mobile, it's definitely the top one, 60% of market. 
uh, and uh, they have some small like three person digital uh, of uh, the company but mostly it's uh, still mobile networks uh, in 80 regions of Russia 80, 80 plus from 84 regions so uh, almost all country almost all regions almost all users in Russia <laughs> And uh, almost anyone have at least one SIM card of uh, MTS and one of other operator actually. <laughs> and uh, they have uh, a lot of problems uh, with this because uh, when I was interviewing team, I found that there was two developers. Two developers actually, really. Oh, 20 that's... managers, board of directors, everyone discussing why they are late with their tasks and two developers. Just two, okay. Yes, uh, actually, actually, for developers, but they understood sprints like one week we make other, one program, program one week other. Okay. While while testing, testing. So my agile there was only like, hey guys, you should increase your team up to fifty developers, if you want to be fast. No agile will help you if you don't have someone to work, and uh, please put out all the management uh, on the middle. <laughs> not seven managers, not 20 managers, only one product manager, uh, chief product owner, uh, four product owners, uh, and okay, let me say that one business analyst can stay there too. Uh, and uh, after that, they uh, made four streams for lanes of uh, Incoming requests, uh, and uh, one and a half years later, they have time to market two months instead of one year and two months. Lovely, that's cool. Yeah, it's not because of uh, Agile, because Agile uh, appeared there without me. I just uh, created them like schematic report how they should uh, form the group of uh, people. And this already uh, suggested Scrum Master. Mm -hmm. Just position. Just position one Scrum Master and 50 people. And Scrum appeared itself because there was Scrum Master. Before there was not. <laughs> you didn't ask the manager if, if they can code? No. This <laughs> manager was from marketing. They didn't think that they can code. <laughs> And they have uh, managers from the marketing and managers from IT outsource company. So they have a uh, company that it belongs to a big company, but it's IT outsourcing. And it acts like outsourcing. Okay, so it means uh, another buffer. Yeah, yeah. Seven managers and this buffer from all these sites. I so, just deleted them. <laughs> if I understand, you, you, you should just uh, you, uh, play the mirror to the company and to highlight what happens. Yeah. Well, you act as a coach or the system coach. <laughs> yeah. If you want to stay, this doesn't work. Try something else. Yeah. Yes. And I just show them this picture. And this guy was responsible for 20 more products. So they copied this uh, without me this schema uh, without me and their vice president of marketing already says we have everyone in teams in agile teams <laughs> hmm? because 20 agile teams that's uh, very big actually yeah. 20 products so they just copied this without me without any help and they had scrum masters and so on okay you showed me this uh, paper I'm, I'm happy and when i come to their director new director uh, and he showed me my paper and say, I don't know who wrote it, but it's perfect. I think everything should work like this. And I was so happy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this paper works without me because I, I, I write very, very important things, in, not in slide, but like 20 pages of Russian text. So anybody can read anything without me, without anything. And they just put it to board of directors anywhere they want. So how this uh, like virus uh, spreads in the company? It's the first case, it's marketing and it's a strategic product. But it was not enough to make uh, big pressure for all the company. 
because it's like oh it's strategic product everything they can want everything they want they can do because they are strategic and uh as all other seeds like uh, cats that was catch it remember this cat yep and this cat everyone almost everyone in russian big companies like this cat they can do anything actually they don't have uh, some borders but the things that they have it's more uh, in the minds so I, I really act like a coach and uh, another platform is uh, in logistics uh, in a procurement department uh, block uh, non-IT non-marketing uh, they just had another KPI I'm just uh, question, sorry one question from Regina I guess this is always linked before you switch in another another point is how do you make the change sustainable after you leave I don't come inside I'm not sorry I'm not coming inside never so uh, I say you ah you should have uh, an, an agile coach or you should have a scrum master do you hear me yep absolutely yeah, okay uh, so uh, I don't uh, as an agile coach I'm more like executive coach mm -hmm. so I said you, sh you need a coach inside you should hire it I should help you I, I, I wish I could help you if you ask, I will find some guys uh, that could match this position. Uh, I'm working more with product managers, with uh, product directors, and so on. Mm -hmm. Someone in Russia doesn't like my position, actually, from Agile Coaches community. But uh, I am now writing a book about it because uh, the biggest help is from outside, even if you're inside of company, but not inside of the team. Yeah, you're quite neutral. Yeah, no, never, no, never no perspective of the of the company. Yeah. Problem. So uh, another product is uh, a platform for buy-in of used uh, electronics of the company. Uh, just may I propose something. Do you want mm -hmm. a, a minute or five minutes just to rest a little bit or drink something, or is it okay for you? If you want, I can. And the audience, do you want uh, a small break? Virginia say no. You can just say yes, or you say no. I can no, no, no. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, this platform is for selling everything useless for company. Not broken, but useless. And uh, this platform doesn't have um, direct marketing support from the company because it's not a proper way to use the brand to sell something used. Uh, and uh, they have a team, completely self-made team. Inside of logistics, they had uh, to hire the selling managers, sales engineers, sales managers. Uh, and they had to put them to positions of logistics managers because of company structure. You should have uh, selling per sales persons in sales block, uh, procurement persons in procurement block, uh, IT persons in IT block, and so on. Each person, each type, and each uh, basket. But they wanted them to have uh, only in their team, uh, on their director, without any politics conversations and so on. And this guy uh, has uh, really made a big story. This uh, paper you see, it's uh, one of the biggest papers in Russia. Uh, and last day, maybe two days ago, uh, they launched the service publicly. Uh, they opened uh, to everyone in Russia to sell their used uh, IT and telecom things uh, in this uh, platform. But before they made it, before the first official uh, public uh, release, they made much more than they could make. They made uh, 80,000 euros uh, without any marketing and team less than uh, 15 people. In Russia, it's uh, like 600 millions of rubles. In average sal salary in Russia is like 20,000 rubles. So it's really big money, not not so like year salary in USA. It's much more. Uh, 
and uh, they made this money and they increased their revenue 30 times up to before uh, previous year it's not about it system but they during last year they made completely from zero the same system that was using a partner decision and it was slow and so on uh, and they changed it uh, they made it from zero and it was not the goal they just made it it was so uh, fun in this company so this was uh, example and uh, these guys uh, really made uh, the history inside of the company like 15 people without any marketing without any budget can make real big money that's cool so uh, we use this uh, to uh, use uh, like uh, our agile center will help you if you want <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they really uh, we, we made internal publicity so now uh, we had uh, created a lot of things uh, for my personal brand inside of company outside of company and so on uh, and people uh, can come ask questions uh, hundreds of product management people in the company ask me questions uh, like from 8, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. <laughs> cool. Yes, uh, and the, now they become, tomorrow they launched the first uh, product management school and there was so much uh, request to the school. So it, I think it will be really good. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So guys, if you want to apply to this school, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's internal, but... Uh, I, I'm about uh, the um, promotion. When we launched an Agile Coaches School, it was like 10 uh, people who wanted. When we launched a Scrum Master School, it was like 20 person. For Product Management School, Product Owner School, actually, uh, they uh, had more than 1, 000, uh, 100 requests for the first launch. And they selected people. I don't rem remember how much, but uh, more than 100, definitely. <laughs> oh, this is impressive. Really impressive. Yeah, it's about popularity and promotion. Yeah. Alex, anything to add here? Anything to add? For the exciting part? Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to come talk here. I have to cut the mic here. Cut the mic? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, what, that's one question. Um, well, it um, exceeded by five, uh, five times uh, the, the uh, attendees to product owner. So why is that? It's because product owner seems to be less work or is, uh, seems to be in better position than Scrum Master? Uh, actually, they had product manager position, uh -huh. but product owner become more popular. It's, it's hype inside of the company. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, and this is something which is, I, I think, quite good. This is what is missed in Western Europe because we are missing the position of product managers in companies in Western Europe. So usually we don't, we, you can't find this any longer in most of the companies. Mm. A product manager is somebody in the marketing area but not in the IT and not linked to the IT? Uh, I destroy the borders between product marketing and IT. I create the single teams. Well done. So we take product manager and IT proxy product owner mm -hmm. uh, and product manager becomes CPO and uh, IT product owners uh, move to marketing usually. Cool. I have a question from uh, Marcus Hensel or Mark. The last seems to be a good example, not so much for the cutter model, which works often as a leadership driven master plan, but more like an emergent change uh, where one strong intervention creates internal transformation, at least when the organization is ready for it. How do we decide how to approach the organization? Uh, there was a team of strategic guys mm -hmm. uh, in IT block. 
uh, IT had very bad reputation and they worked uh, and they used this uh, to increase uh, reputation. So we worked with several strategy guys, uh, five agile coaches, uh, project manager of agile coaches, uh, and so on. So there was a big back office of transformation and several thousands of people now moved to tribes, uh, clusters, and so on. But in IT, I don't work actually. I uh, us uh, usually work as connector between marketing and IT to make this uh, communication proper. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, you reached the end your, of your... Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <That's> <laughs> so my point is, so this is an unconference, an uncomplicated conference. So guys, the mic is open if you have questions to ask or maybe remarks or ideas or your point of view. So Eli is hiding. <laughs> okay. Okay, now you can see, okay. John, any points? Didn't hear you. So thanks for coming. Okay, but, uh, when there's nothing to say, there is nothing to say. So one of all, uh, I thank you so much, Marina, for your, for your point, for your idea on this presentation. This is great. I, I think we, we discovered a lot of things of common. I talked with the guys here, with the German guys, I say, I don't see huge cultural changes because we are facing most of the same problems. Uh, Virginia is asking something here. If there is a company that needs to change and become more agile, how do you sell you the agile concept to them and get hired? Mm, is it a question to me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what a star here. Uh, uh, actually, it's very easy. Uh, someone uh, recommends me to the CEO when they have very big problems. Uh, nobody comes to me when they have everything fine. Uh, according to my previous case of mobile telesystems, they calculated uh, that if they will not change in five years, they will be in very big problem. Five years or 10 years, but this company have already 25 years experience and they was first all this time. Mm -hmm. So that's why they understood that they will have problems in like 10 years period and become acting now uh, and uh, I have a lot of companies smaller uh, usually someone recommends like hey this is Marina she will help you 